welding safety is key. First off, there's more than one option when it comes to welding hoods or helmets. This is an auto darkening welding helmet that I use. Uh, the bigger thing is, is like I said, auto darkening. Well, it's clear going through until the arc is created. And then the shield will automatically darken based off the settings on the sensitivity to the, she or the welding shade that I have selected on this welding helmet. There are different variances and varieties of auto darkening welding helmets, as well as there are fixed lens welding helmets. Obviously the auto darkening one is a more expensive example, but a fixed lens is how I learned how to weld. Other than that, gloves. You're working with hot molten steel. I mean, this stuff is hot. You don't want all that uh, slag or you know spatter to be rolling up on your hands. So a good pair of welding gloves is, I mean, vitally key. Rather than burn yourself up, you know, burn up a uh, you know a dead hide. Um, you know, when it comes to thicker materials, I mean, sometimes you really need to have the bigger, meatier gloves that are, you know, double lined and insulated like these ones are. You know, it's a little bit trickier to see, but you can see that these are completely insulated. All the fingers are insulated, but when it comes to articulation of your fingers, I mean, sometimes it's easier just to have the single layer uh, leather, uh, these are pig skins. They also offer several other different varieties of different leathers in your gloves to, it's all on preference, you know, when you get more comfortable with it or the more you're used to it, the more you're gonna select one size or variety of glove. These are uh, just sleeves. These cover up my bare skin from the ultraviolet rays that you're creating when you're establishing the arc. Covering your skin up, I mean, is vitally key. And if you don't like wearing sleeves or having long sleeves on, you can use sunblock. Uh, I like to make sure that there's another layer of protection between me and whatever is hot and gonna fall on top of my skin. But the, again, that's preference alone. You know, it, everybody's a little bit different on that. When cleaning or preparing your metal, removing paint, rust, any of those items, you know, a good pair of safety glasses is key. You only got two eyes, so make sure you keep them. Another safety concern is electrical hazards. It is always important to make sure you have a good solid ground. The way to detect if you have a good ground is if you're welding and you pull the trigger and it establishes an arc. If it does not and the wire rolls out and doesn't establish an arc, you don't have a, your metal grounded properly. You want to work in a clean, well ventilated area to make sure that you're not going to be breathing in any kind of neurotoxins or gases that you may be creating while molting the metal, welding, uh, as is Galvanized steel creates a neurotoxin when the coating itself is being burned off and that is very common on all uh, reproduction sheet metal panels you're going to find and so you want to clean that off before welding. It's also important to have a clean, safe, dry environment for welding. You don't want to become the ground and as well as making sure that you have any kind of open containers, uh, anything that's flammable. So rags and, you know, solvents, including your clothing, you know, uh, making sure that you have a good pair of leather boots on is very key. You don't want to be playing hot foot in the shop. So avoid items like polyester and nylon and your clothing. They're not going to serve you any good because that Slag is just going to burn straight through it. These are some important tips to remember 
before starting to weld.